I don't normally make videos responding to other YouTubers' videos, but there was a video that Rick Beato put out a few months ago called The Real Reason Why Music Is Getting Worse that I felt I needed to respond to. I've not been able to do that till now because I've actually been working on music like I was doing today, but here we go. I've known Rick since 1997 and we did a lot of projects together when he first started producing bands. I have a lot of respect for his accomplishments and the videos that he's making. He actually interviewed me in the early days of his YouTube channel and encouraged me to make videos myself. Rick has been a huge influence on my career, but I think he missed the mark in his video and there were some things he was just wrong about. In the first part of his video, he seems to be suggesting that advances in technology is this ominous thing that is somehow eroding music. Then he moves on to quantizing and editing drums using Beat Detective and recording drums and using drum samples and whoa, where did these drum samples come from? Well, where do you think samples come from? Well, I'll tell you where those drum samples came from. The Elisis D4. These are the samples that Rick and I used in the early days. I had never used drum samples on a live drum set before until I started working with Rick. Aggressive. We also used Chrome. These are actually great sounding samples for the type of bands we're doing. And we used these. And the, the first time I ever used Beat Detective on a song, which sometimes I have to do, was working with Rick. We were editing drums. And look, I'm not trying to beat up on him. We had a job and we had to get it done. And some of the bands we were working with weren't that good. So we used the technology at hand to get the work done. And anybody who was having any kind of success in the music business 15 or 20 years ago had to play the game. I would have radio promoters calling me, chiming in about my mixes and saying, oh, you got to get to the hook in 39 seconds. Can you take out, uh, you know, three seconds from the intro? And I'm like trying to explain to them how I can't remove one and a half measures from the intro and make it sound all right. Or dealing with a &R people, like the a &R guy who didn't like the way we changed the melody because he'd been listening to an old crappy demo with attitude vocals and insisted that we put the vocal melody back to singing notes that weren't even in the key of the song and the arguments. This was actually something I was doing with Rick. If you could have seen Rick, but it was just one of those things. The label had the power. That's the stuff I wish Rick would talk about. Then Rick talks about how technology has killed innovation. Well, back then we didn't have that technology. We didn't have the algorithms. We didn't have Spotify, but we had hard set musical genres and radio formats. And about the only way to hear new music was on the radio, which was part of a system which was controlled by the major labels, radio promoters, radio program directors, and you needed a huge amount of money to pay off the people that needed to be paid off. And you needed to sound exactly like the bands or artists that were in the genre that you were trying to compete in. I I mean, talk about killing innovation. I remember Rick once describing the music business as being like a meat grinding machine. It would take in fresh raw meat and pump out sausages, and that's how the system worked. But that's probably also why we would sit there and listen to other records and their mixes and try to match the level of the cymbals and the guitar tones and how the vocals sounded. And that stuff actually helped make me a way better mixer, but I felt like we often lost the uniqueness of these bands so that we could be accepted by the gatekeepers. I think the reason Rick has the perspective that he has is partially because he does these uh, videos about the top 10 songs on Spotify, which of course are going to be terrible. But, you know, had you just been listening to Top 40 Radio back in the day, you would have heard some terrible stuff back then as well. Also, he's not producing young artists anymore. He's, you know, interviewing these old school legends, which is great, but maybe he's just you know, lost touch with what's going on on the street level. I am regularly working with artists who are typically 40 years younger than me, and I find what they're bringing in is very innovative. It's it's very different. I couldn't even say what genre it is. I mean, most of the stuff I've worked on in the last few years, I find to be very creative and actually some of the most creative stuff I've ever worked on in my career. Way better than the cookie cutter stuff I was doing back in the day. Rick talks about how important music was culturally back then, and there was this anticipation of the record coming out and having to go to the music store to buy the album and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, the distribution systems that were set up back then were controlled by a small group of people, and it made it hard to actually find any new music except for the music 
that they wanted you to hear. He also complains about how if somebody's listening to Spotify and they hear a song that they don't like, they can just skip to the next one if they don't like it. Is this a problem? I mean, I hated listening to the radio and having to wait to a song I didn't like and not having another station I could listen to. I mean, we were stuck with that. You had to listen three songs you didn't like to get to the next one. Me, I like scrolling to the next song. Another big point Rick makes is that because music is basically free now, it's not valued so much. And I don't know what that really has to do with the quality of music being out there. I mean, maybe he's just pissed off because our royalties have virtually evaporated, but that's a whole other video. All I know is that most of the young people I meet today have a huge passion for music and are turning me on to new things. I've got three boys who are constantly listening to music, and one of them makes a point of taking me out for these car rides where he's playing me music that I've not heard before, which is how I heard a song called Gravity by a composer named Kevin Penkin. And he mostly does music for video games and anime. And when I heard that song the first time, it was like so emotional. Like I, I literally cried and it changed my life and inspired me to start working on my own music again and working on my album, which is what I'm doing. But I've just got to say, there is some really great new music out there. But to get back to the main point Rick was making about how music was hard to make back in the day, which I guess is suggesting that because of that, it made people practice more and become better singers, I feel like he's missing a key point. And that is the organizational skills and determination it took to form a band, schedule rehearsals, which is like herding cats, putting together a set of cover songs, and I'm not even talking about writing songs, and coordinating the logistics of moving all your gear and then setting it all up to play your friend's pool party was more work, financial investment, headaches, and took more time than it takes for somebody to write, record, and release their whole album on Spotify today. And while that does contribute to a lack of musical skills, I think the real issue is that the people who would have quit doing music back in the day because it was just so hard to do, they're now putting out music and you're hearing all that and you're going, oh my God, music is going downhill. But the people who are serious artists are using technology and they are making great music. It's just that they have to compete with a horde of hobbyists. I don't think technology has prevented musical innovation whatsoever. As a guy who spent years recording and mixing completely in analog with very little gear, I can tell you technology has opened the doors to innovation way more than it is closed for me. But what technology has done is to take away our creative space and time. The ability to be in our own heads and our own little dream worlds. Because we're being constantly interrupted by phone calls and text messages and notifications. I mean, when was the last time you had hours where you weren't looking at social media or some goofy pointless videos and were alone centered in your own mind and deep thoughts. That is how I think technology has affected us. So put your phone in the other room next time you're working on music, which right now I think that's what I'm going to do.